Everybody, it is Wednesday, November 16th. It's 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're watching this live, my name's Adam Flowers. And uh, today we have an interesting topic. Oscar Goodman who just had a statue put up, a bronze statue downtown on 3rd Street in front of the historic 3rd Street School. And we're going to tell you all about that and much, much, much more. So welcome back, guys. It's Mob Vlog. All right, Red I'm Wimbledon. not the only person that does that now. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's you know what? It's it's it, it. You know things happen. So how are you doing today, Red? I'm doing great, Chipper. Chipper, great. That's fantastic. So, folks, um, Oscar Goodman. We're going to get into Oscar. I want to. I want to talk uh, uh, and tell you guys a little bit about it. But I want to say hello to everybody. Um, Adam Cuss, Trace. Uh, RV Doc, Eric Epstein, looks like you're getting to watch it live today. Don Chichio, Jacqueline Moore, Rhonda Moretti, Julie M, John Wallace. Bull. Nice, to see, nice to see all of you guys here today. Uh, even Row Bears here. So, uh, yeah, welcome in uh, Tony Damiano. Will Red laugh inappropriately today? Of course he will. He's Red Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. That's me. That's the way I am. It's, uh, yeah, it's good to see you, everybody. So, Keith Helton, nice to see you. All right, Sean Pender, everybody's here. So, let's get into this. Who's Oscar Goodman? First off, so uh, Oscar Goodman, uh, as you guys know, was a uh, mayor of Las Vegas. A lot of you know this. He did three terms, he served 12 years, maximum that you can do. Right now, his a wife, a, a man with a history. <laughs> yes. His wife, Carolyn, she is on her third term. She's done uh, 10 years so far, so two more years to go. And uh, Carolyn, she's wonderful, uh, great mayor too. Awesome. Um, and Oscar was a great mayor. And I understand that maybe their son is going to run next. So we're going to have the Oscar for the Goodmans for 24 years. We could possibly go 36 years with them. That's a legacy, Red. <laughs> now, yeah, speaking of legacies. <laughs> It shocked me when you told me about it. His now, son is a judge. Yes, yes, his son is a is a He's judge. Being groomed. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I see it coming. It's coming. He so. groomed his wife. He groomed his wife to become mayor. <laughs> she Not did a wonder. Wife. She's doing a wonderful job. She did a wonderful. She's doing a, a wonderful job. Um, I agree. Now, Oscar has a steakhouse downtown, and I covered this in a in a video not too long ago. Um, he's got a steakhouse, and he uh, opened up a um, restaurant inside the Plaza Hotel. It actually was a filming location for a casino. Because, uh, it's one of the places where Sharon Stone and uh, De Niro were sitting when they were first dating in the movie. Uh, I believe it's towards the beginning. Uh, They're sitting in a booth. Here's the video that we, uh, here's the video that I, I put out. And check this out. Here, let's play this. Hey guys, we're here at the Plaza Hotel, and uh, right above me is Oscar's Steakhouse. Take a look. It sticks out. It has a wonderful view of Fremont Street. Well, it had until they until they built those zip lines right there. We're gonna head into the Plaza, take you upstairs to Oscar's uh, to Oscar's Steakhouse, where there is a brand new statue put up of Tony Spilatro and Oscar Goodman. Let's go. I thought maybe it was life-size, but it's not life-size. I guarantee you that. And um, 
we are walking into this place right here. And there you have it, Oscar's Steakhouse. And as you can see, there are a lot of pictures of Oscar, pictures all over the wall. As you all know, Oscar Goodman defended Tony Spilatro, and that is that is Tony Spilatro and Oscar Goodman. Now, granted, it definitely is not life size. I am right now standing next to Tony Spilatro, and he is damn near six foot tall. <laughs> So the little guy, I don't think they're calling him the little guy here. And I gotta say, Oscar, with a very serious look on his face here, extremely serious look. There's Oscar, there's Tony, there's the statue. He's wearing handcuffs. See? And of course, yeah. here's Fremont Street. For giggles. Let's see. This is me next to Oscar Goodman. Oscar Goodman is bigger than Penn Gillette. Oscar's probably six foot eight. <laughs> That's the picture that that statue's based off of. Tina's wearing handcuffs there. Okay, so red. So there's a statue. I thought that was an event. Okay. So last night, I got a phone call. Guess what was just on the news? What was just on the news? They put up a statue of Oscar Goodman, bronze statue downtown, Oscar Goodman. And it has June 28th, 1999 to July 6th, 2010. And the happiest mayor in the universe, not in the world, the happiest mayor in the universe, that Oscar. You know why he's so happy? He's happy because he's got the martini <laughs> and he's got the two showgirls. Oh, yeah. And the Elvis. You... <laughs> if you're the mayor of Las Vegas, this is, this is the way to do it. Here. What? Here. What'd you say, Red? I said he was a successful uh, attorney, prosecutor at first, then mayor. I mean, his wife became mayor. They had a fine son. He became a judge. He's got it all. So, Even including his martini. He's got his Right martini. across from a school. <laughs> right across from a school. <laughs> it's in front of yeah, his I mean, I, You can't open a little bit of a and across from a school. All right, hold on. So several years ago, when Oscar was mayor, so over 10 years ago, over a decade ago, when he was mayor, he was doing a talk at a school here in town, elementary school. And the, the same kids one, asked, right across the street? I don't think it was the same one. I don't think it was the same one, no. Uh, was I don't it think a, so. a middle school? Uh, no, I think it was an elementary school, if I'm not mistaken, Red. I'm pretty okay. sure it was an elementary school. Okay. <laughs> and the kids asked him, well, what are his hobbies? And he said, his hobby was tr drinking martinis. Okay. So one of his hobbies, which the teachers and the parents were a little like shocked about. He'd have said that to the kids. And they asked him if he was on an island, stranded by himself, could only have one thing. What would he have? He said, a bottle of gin. <laughs> this is a cool mayor. All right. This is a cool mayor. This is the way. And he, he claimed, well, I'm just being myself. You know, so I'm just being me, just being who I am. I like Oscar. You know, when he was mayor, he um, they had a spray painting problem, and uh, the everybody's going around tagging everything with spray paint, so they had to have all the paint locked up in the in the uh, in the Home Depots. You had to show your ID. You know, Oscar Goodman said at the council meeting, so we should cut off a couple of their thumbs. You know, that way they can't hold a can of spray paint and walk around going, I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> I wonder where he got that idea. <laughs> that's that's, that's quiet. That that I think is that's a that's a cool mayor. You know the welcome to Las Vegas sign is nostalgic. It's people go there, they take their photographs in front of it. It's become this wonderful piece of Vegas history. 
and uh, somebody threw paint at the sign. And they threw little, little balloon fulls of paint and splattered the sign. Oscar demanded decapitation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. They put up a statue for Oscar. I think they ought to put up a statue, but it's great. He's even holding a martini right there in front of the school. You know, it's perfect. Couldn't get any better. It's, it's it's only in Las it, Vegas. Only in Las Vegas. And he, yeah, only in Vegas, man. I'm telling you, only in Vegas. Unbelievable. I love this. Uh, love this town. I love this town. So everybody is here tonight. Uh, Eric Epstein, Adam Blackhawks or Golden Knights? I don't, the puck goes too fast. I can't watch it. It's the, it goes around the, the it's too fast. It's yeah, how do you keep your eye on that? Benedict Mastriani, thank you very much. That was very nice of you. Um, appreciate your super sticker there. So it is uh, <clears throat> wow, street stories. Hello, everyone stuck at work. Have a great show and a wonderful week. You too, Anthony. Uh, it's nice to see you out here. Uh, are they, oh my gosh, truly am. Are they holding him upright? I'm, I'm guessing that that comment <laughs> about this photograph right here. I was, you know, they do have their hands in. Yeah, they're holding him up. He's getting older, you know. It's what happens when you get older. You, it's not, it's part of life. Yeah, it's a part of life. You want two babes, one on each arm. <laughs> that's it, right? I mean, if, if you got to do it, if you need the help, if you need the help, that's the help to get right there. Why I'm not? telling you. Why not? And that's that Jesse Guerin over here, the Elvis impersonator. That sure looks like Jesse. So, anyhow, um, he, so so red. Did you catch this one, John? Jeff, <laughs> little did Spilatra know he'd be funding statues of Oscar for years. <laughs> no, you know I I don't know where the money for that came from. Probably the <laughs> city. I would Those imagine. ladies got me up, right? LOL. I'm sure That's his funny. wife had no problem with broken the pen saying, oh, yeah, statue approved. <laughs> uh, does he have a fake Rolex on? No, Oscar wouldn't be wearing a fake Rolex. Come on. Yeah, they talked about his fake Rolex. Frank talked about it. Frank, Frank. Uh, Clown. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. He did. He did say that. No, I don't see that. I don't see I don't see any watch at all, guys. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it is Oscars in a music video by the Killers. I'm the man. Really, I did not know that. That's an interesting. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Huh. So Oscar was born and raised in Philadelphia. He graduated from Harford, sorry, Haverford School. Haverford College and received his JD degree from the University of Pennsylvania Law School. He and his wife Carolyn have four, right? Four children. What you call a uh, Philadelphia career. lawyer. A Philadelphia lawyer. <laughs> yes, it's a Philadelphia lawyer. During his career as a defense attorney, Goodman represented defendants accused of being some of the leading organized crime figures of Las Vegas, such as Meyer Lansky, Nikki Scarfo, Scarfo Herbie Fat Herbie Blitzstein. Phil Leonetti and former Stardust Casino boss Frank Rosenthal and J Jamil Jimmy Chagra, a 70s drug trafficker who was acquitted of ordering the murder of federal judge John H. Wood Jr. One of his notorious clients was reputed Chicago mobster Anthony Tony the Ant Spilatro, who was known to have a short and violent temper. In the semi-factual 95 Movie Casino, the character of Nicky Santoro was based on Spilatro was portrayed by Pesci. Goodman had a cameo appearance in the film as himself, where he was depicted defending Ace Rothstein, a character closely based, clo closely based on Lefty Rosenthal, played by De Niro. Civil service. In 64, his wife became uh, active in the local Jewish Federation, Soon after they moved to Las Vegas, Carolyn eventually served as head of the Federation Women's Divisions. Through the years of 80 and 81, he served as president of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. Goodman was also a member of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. Oh, they're the ones that came up with that great slogan. What happens here stays here. 
You're right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Elections. In June of 8th of 99, Goodman was elected mayor of Las Vegas after he received 63.76% of the vote. That's 32,000. Well, that's more than Sheriff Joe received. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it is. No, it is. Boy, that Joe, that he just got in there by a, I mean, he, <laughs> that was, that was tight. I was tight. But he made it. He made it. Yeah, he, he did. Uh, then Las Vegas City Councilman Arnie Adamson received 36.2%. In 2003, Goodman was reelected to a second four-year term, defeated five opponents after he received, get ready, 85.7% uh, of the vote. 85.7%, and he had five people running against him. On April of 03, or sorry, April 3rd of 07, he was reelected to a third and final term with 83.6% of the votes and once again defeated five opponents. Despite having called Las Vegas most popular, despite having been called Las Vegas's most popular mayor, the city has term limit laws that restrict mayors to a maximum of three terms. In 2011, Carolyn Goodman was elected to succeed her husband as mayor after she earned 60 percent of the votes so she didn't just squiggle in there either 60 percent is a pretty good uh that's a landslide in june 28th of 99 goodman was the first mayor of las vegas to have his image placed on a five dollar and 25 dollar casino chip issued by a las vegas casino <laughs> the two chips were issued by the four queens hotel in downtown vegas in 06 the four queens put out a 200 dollar silver strike with the likeness of Goodman on it. That's pretty that's pretty cool. Goodman has been vocal about having major league so. baseball team relocated to Vegas. In 04, the city failed to secure a move by the Montreal Expos to the city. Instead, the term the team relocated to Washington, DC and became the Washington Nationals. Later that year, Goodman officials met with officials in the for the Florida Marlins. The Chicago White Sox had considered a move, but negotiations failed after Chicago officials provided incentives for them to stay. Yeah, see, Chicago. Yeah, you know how that yeah. works. <laughs> oh, yeah. Goodman worked to get the National Football League to relocate in Las Vegas. On April 4th of 06, he called the San Diego Chargers, asked them if they'd be interested. Because of a contract, they could not talk about a possible move. On January 4th of 07, he called again, since the team was not allowed to talk to other cities about possible move. Again, Goodman was turned down for the time being. Oh, wow. So he tried to do that. The Oakland Raiders, Carolyn Goodman, under that tenure, tried to get them. Uh, in 03, Goodman was voted the least effective public official. What? in the Review wow. Journal's annual reader poll. In July of 06, Goodman criticized the Ubisoft game, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas for its premise of a terrorism in Las Vegas because he thought it might tarnish the city's image. He said, quote, it's based on a false premise. It could be harmful economically, and it may be something that's not entitled to free speech protection. I will ask whether or not we can stop it. In 09 and 10, Goodman was angered by President Barack Obama's allegedly negative marks about Vegas. I remember that. He said, don't, do go don't, don't go to Vegas. Go don't go to Vegas. Don't waste yeah. your money. Oh, don't waste your money. Have your You're going to need it. There. Don't go there. I was terrible. Oh, yeah. That was, I remember when that happened. My jaw went, uh. <laughs> oh. There, there was like, currently prostitution. Let's get to the prostitution part. Currently, prostitution is legal in Nevada, only in rural counties with less, uh, with fewer than 400,000 residents, a requirement which excludes Clark County and the city of Vegas from allowing the practice. The practice? It's a practice, huh? <laughs> prostitution? You got it, you sell it, you still got it. That's the business to be in, Red. You oh, got yeah. it, you sell it, you still got it? All right, never mind. So Jacqueline, they, tune in after the show here. We're going to my show after the show. Goodman supports legalize Goodman supports legalizing prostitution in the city's downtown area as a revenue generator and a tool for revitalization. 
And I think that that would do a lot of revitalizing. Don't you think so, Red? Oh, yeah. Some journalists have criticized this position. <laughs> I think some investigation. In February of 04, Robert Rose, an ethics watchdog, filed a complaint with Nevada Commission on Ethics, claiming that during the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Goodman handed out to fellow mayors, conference attendees, and other political figures invitations to a cocktail party that Goodman was hosting. Rose alleged that this was nothing more than the mayor abusing his power of office to help promote a business that is owned by his son, Ross Goodman, and Vegas Councilman Michael Mack. The Nevada Ethics Commission opened an investigation on April 14th in 04 and May 13th of 04. The members of the commission found that the mayor in ethics found the mayor in ethics violation, although no fine was rendered. Goodman sued the commission and won. The commission's ruling was reversed by the court. On September 16th, 04, Rose again filed a complaint with the Nevada Commission on Ethics, this time asking the commission to clarify Goodman's affiliation with his son Ross, Ross's law firm. In a statement, the mayor explained his name on the letterhead is a way of informing out-of-state law firms that Ross Goodman is his son. However, a person serving as an elected public official in Nevada may not have his name listed on a law firm letterhead and Goodman removed his name under a protest after several newspaper articles noted the infraction. On July 18th of 05, the Nevada Commission of Ethics concluded insufficient cause for having a hearing and recommended the allegations be dismissed, clearing Goodman of the ethics complaint regarding his name listed as of counsel to the Goodman Law Group. And finally, on September 11th of 07, the Supreme Court in Nevada ruled that Goodman did not violate any ethics laws during the 2004 cocktail party he hosted on behalf of his son, Ross Goodman. End of story. So, I got to tell you, the guy was very vocal. <laughs> he's a, he was a good lawyer. He's, he's born to talk to people. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he's Mr. Personality. That's, that's for uh, I mean, certain. He's definitely like that. Um, post mayoral career, he, he currently serves as counsel to Goodman Law Group, a law Las Vegas law firm formed by his son Ross Goodman. His memoir, "Being Oscar: From Mob Lawyer to Mayor of Las Vegas," written with George Anastasia, was published in 2013. Ooh, I got to get that and read it. Speculations of future campaigns. Goodman had entertained the idea of seeking the Democrat national, Democratic Nash, uh, nomination in the 06 U.S. Senate election in Nevada in order to run against incumbent Senator uh, John Ensign. He ultimately announced he would not run for the nomination, which went to Jack Carter, the son of President Jimmy Carter. Well, Goodman fueled speculation that he might run as an independent in the 2010 Nevada gubernatorial election against incumbent Republican Jim Gibbons and presumptive Democrat candidate Rory Reid. However, Goodman decided not to run for governor, citing his desire to stay close to his family and objections to moving to Carson City. Las Vegas com commentator uh, David Figler wrote in 09 that Goodman might become the first Jewish president of the United States. Wouldn't that have been something, huh? Didn't see that happen. Gary you Fisher has a comment. I know Gary. My mom, my mom was going to be, sorry, my mom was going to open an escort agency in Vegas in 1984, but bosses decided there was too yes, much. She used to, I have one in Chicago. Gary Fisher. She used to have one in Chicago. Who was she? I knew Gary's mother. I know her quite well. Oh. Um, she was arrested in Chicago for an escort agency that she had. She was caught up in uh, Operation Safe Bet. Wow. So um, she, she thought she moved to Vegas, but no deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... I was working at a casino a few years back and an escort came up to me and asked me if I wanted some company. I said, I'm, I said, sorry, I'm working. And she said, yeah, me too. I'm working. <laughs> I was on an airplane and the flight attendant, she, she said to me, she said, would you like some headphones? And I said, yeah. How'd you know my name was phones? <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> 
popular culture. Goodman appeared as himself in the 1995 Martin Scorsese film Casino. Later on, he made another brief appearance in the film Looney Tunes, back in action in the DVD extras. In 06, he appeared as himself in the direct to buy to DV, direct to DV film Bachelor Party Vegas and made another brief appearance in the DVD version of Looney Tunes back in action. In 2000, a bobblehead doll of Goodman was issued as a promotion during the Las Vegas 51's baseball game. As a celebrity photographer for the Playboy Cyber Club, Goodman shot a topless pictorial of Miss January 2001 Arena Voronina for, a, for the website. In 02, Goodman became a spokesman for Bombay Sapphire Gin. He donated $100,000. <laughs> to, no, I thought he was going to say Bombay Sapphire Gin. No, he donated $100,000 of his salary to charity, including $50,000 to the Meadows School founded by his wife. He would later generate controversy in 05 when he joked about his love of gin before an elementary class school. Yes, it was elementary, you see. In 04 or 03, Las Vegas Review columnist John L. Smith wrote a book chron chronicling Goodman's life titled Of Rats and Men, Oscar Goodman's life from mob mouthpiece to mayor of Las Vegas. Goodman guest starred as himself three times on CBS series CSI. The episodes Goodman was featured in was called yeah, Squeagle, where he defended Anne Margaret's character from being harassed by the LVPD. Made Man, um, M A I D Man, Made Man, where he first appeared at the opening of the Mob Museum, which was recreated for the show in advance of its opening and last rollout as a lawyer for a suspect during an investigation. Goodman was interviewed for television programs, The Making of the Mob, New York, and The Making of the Mob, Chicago, in 15 and 16, respectively. Interesting. I mean, he's done a lot. He was a I big man. He should, he should have a statue, and there it is. There's, there's the statue downtown. He deserves that statue. He deserves that Why statue. not? You know, why not? It's a... Uh, it's a and it's a bronze statue. I mean, that's no uh, no playing around there. That's the that's made the last. So, <laughs> oh, it's it's just it's it's too uh, it's it's too cool. What can you say? New statue. Let me just see this uh, uh, quickly. An article I'm pulling up here because uh, I don't want to get the location on this incorrect here. I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the right information. It is, uh, it was unveiled at the historic Fifth Street School downtown Tuesday morning, yesterday morning. So now one thing that that this kind of overshadowed is that the um, yesterday there was another statue that was unveiled here in town. So it was across town on Buffalo. That is important. Not as important yeah. as Oscar. <laughs> yes, yeah. Las Vegas fallen police officers statue. Okay, and it won't be long. It'll be the Goodman Airport instead of the Harry Reid Airport. <laughs> let me get this out of the out of the. Uh, let me get this out of the uh, Las Vegas Review Journal. A statue of Metropolitan Police Department Lieutenant Eric Lloyd is set to be unveiled at 6 p.m. Tuesday at the Centennial Hills Community Center at 6601 North Buffalo Drive. His wife, Mindy, and Fiore are scheduled to speak at the ceremony. Lloyd worked for Metro for 29 years before he died from COVID-19 on, on July 29, 2020. He was only 53 years old. He was the president of the Injured Police Officers Fund for 16 years. The organization raises money for families of fallen and injured officers across the valley. The artist who sculpted these statues, Brian Hanlon, also created the statue for fallen officer Alan uh, Beck. Officer Alan Beck, Memorial, the officer Alan Beck Memorial Park opened in January 2020. Nearly six years after Beck and his partner, Igor Soldo, were shot and killed inside CeCe's Pizza. I remember that. They were just sitting in there having lunch, and these two 
guys walked in and just they just shot him. Then I think they ran across into a Walmart afterwards on a shooting spree. I'm almost positive, or, or it was, or it was the two, it was the two street performers, is what it was. They were Fremont street performers. I remember that was really a bad incident. That was that was really really bad. Um, and we had just done a lot of work with the city organizing Fremont Street. Uh, when I say we, a group of us performers down there formed a 501c3 called Span the Street Performers and Artists in Nevada. We worked so closely, and I, I thought that made, that made it look so. I was like, look so bad. They dressed the two of them. I'm almost sure. I'm almost sure, unless I'm having the Mandela effect, that they were dressed like, um, um, like that Harlequin and Joker. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's who it was, but just messed up, man. Completely messed up. So um, that's uh, that's the other statue, and uh, I think he's, I think he's very deserving of a statue, a monument. How many yeah. people did as much for Las Vegas as he did? Oh, uh, is Oscar? Yeah, he did a whole lot. This was. Um, but who can you think of that did any more for the city of Las Vegas? No, Oscar did a ton for it. But to finish up with uh, Lieutenant Eric Lloyd, there's a, there was a uh, portrait of him. It's kind of small on the screen here, but that's a portrait of him that was set up before a, before a burial service for him. So, so that's the news in Vegas about the statue. You got Oscar. With uh, Elvis there and uh, his two showgirls with his new statue downtown in front of the historic school. And, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting when we heard that. So wanted to share I that thought it was, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Red, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of reading out of Red's book. And I uh, want to say, uh, um, Mo, Mo Dale, it's Keith Helton. Yeah, there should be a statue to Mo Daylitz. I, I really do. I think there should be. That's a uh, yeah, Mo Daylitz. He did a lot for this. Actually, Mo Daylitz did a lot. I'll never forget that line of Godfather too. I'll never forget that line of the God Godfather too, where he said, "There isn't even a statue, a plaque." <laughs> yeah, right. It, he, it's called, true. he called him Mo Green in the movie. So a skeleton walks into a bar and he says, "Give me a beer and a mop." <laughs> that's funny but Mo, Mo, look here's what Mo Dalitz did Mo Dalitz put up middle income housing for the workers it was his idea the uh, Las Vegas Country Club the Regency Tower that land was purchased uh, with a conglomeration Mo Dalitz being one of them Sheldon Adelson's father was another one of them uh, they built that Regency Tower the put up the convention center was his idea. The first horse race track was Mo Dalitz's idea. He supported the public library district when it went uh, defunct and uh, supported with his own money. He donated to the uh, he donated to the civic leagues in town. He was awarded Man of the Year uh, in Vegas. He was awarded the Liberty Torch Award by the Anti Defamation League. He got the first two Teamsters pension fund loans for Jimmy Hoffa, which was the Boulevard Mall, which was the first mall in town, and then the Sunrise Hospital which was the first hospital in town. I mean, he did a lot for the community. I'm not trying to glorify him, but oh, yeah. you should see, you should see, we, well, you know, we should do that one day. I got the photos of Mo Dalitz's penthouse suite at the top of the Regency Tower. Two pools, two wow. kitchens, 14 rooms. It's a two levels. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. Sold not too long ago. Uh, it was sold for, I think it was listed to $3.2 million. So Joe Collada, yes, you're going to love Frank's book. Whoever just said that they're yes. writing, reading the book that just got it. Uh, I saw that in the um, comments. So, uh, uh, so, yeah. Jacqueline, enjoy. She, she's in the middle of my book now. It It, it is. A, it is you're going gonna to love it. It's great. It's a great book. So great book. Anyway, we have had fun today. And, uh, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I know I did. Red, it's been a blast, buddy. But it's time to go do a little bit of a uh, little bit of reading. So on your uh, your book. So you guys have a great day, and uh, come out here to Vegas. You know the, the the Bob tour is going. We're about to open up this crime tour. I think it's opening the day after 
uh, the day after uh, Thanksgiving. So join us for the Vegas mob tour experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he's off. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit the Rat Pack is back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was made. All right, everybody. It has been a great time. It has been fun. It, is, it has been a great time. It's been a lot of fun. But you guys have a wonderful day. Red, thanks so much. I'll see you soon. And uh, have a great day, buddy. We'll You're welcome. See you next time. See, see you next time, Red. God Thanks bless. a bunch. God it's bless. been fun. I'll vlog.